Using the Avada mobile responsive settings is going to allow you to have your website look nice when people visit it on a mobile device, which is really important because, you know, these days, uh, almost 50% or more of people use mobile devices when browsing the internet. So making sure your website looks good and is easy to navigate on a mobile device is going to be extremely important, especially moving into the future. So assuming that you already have your website set up with Avada installed on it, um, all you need to do is log into your website. Once you're logged in, you should see this Avada tab at the top. If you just click global options, I'm going to open that up in a new tab just so we can look at this, keep this page live and look at it together. Uh, but from here, the second option here is responsive. So if you click on that option, that's going to be the actual Avada mobile responsive options. So you can see it says responsive here. So this is the responsive design. This is the element responsive breakpoints. And then we have the responsive typography. <clears throat> Excuse me. So these are going to be the three areas that we're really going to focus on in this video. Um, there's all sorts of responsive features embedded into pretty much every aspect of websites these days. But <laughs> this is going to dictate the general responsiveness of your website. So the first thing is that it's going to give you the option to choose a responsive design. So if you don't want it, you can just turn it off. Uh, obviously, we do want responsive so that it looks good on mobile devices. Uh, so with that feature set to on, then there's going to be some breakpoints that we're going to be able to set here. So a breakpoint means when the size of the screen is a certain width, then something's going to change. So to show you what I'm talking about, if you right click in Google Chrome and click inspect elements, um, then it's going to give us this option here to um, look at some different things. And if you notice in the top right corner when I'm changing the size of the screen, it's giving us these numbers up here. Um, it's saying nine, nine, it's saying a thousand by 800, right? So if we look here, it's saying that this breakpoint is at 1099, which means, and I think we can see this here, uh, which essentially means once the screen gets below a certain width, then it's going to change. So see how it started stacking these boxes instead of putting them next to each other. So it stacked the content over this image. So if we expand this out past 800, then it puts them next to each other, which is going to be more like a tablet. But if we go below 800, then it breaks. So that's what we call a breakpoint. And that is set right here, the site content responsive breakpoint. So you can see we have that set at 800 and then the sidebar is set at 800 as well. So if there's a sidebar on the page, then the sidebar will disappear when the width of the page is below 800 pixels. And a pixel is just a little square dot. So 800 of those wide is this width right here. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Okay, so then there's also the header responsive breakpoint. And this is really important because there's this mobile header that shows up and you want it to show up before your uh, navigation items start stacking on top of each other. So if this pushes all the way over to the left and hits this logo right here, it's gonna drop down underneath this item. Well, it's gonna drop this last contact. So contact is gonna drop down below lawn care, which doesn't look very good. <clears throat> so instead we want it to switch over to this mobile menu where then someone can just click on this easily see all the options and navigate to where they want to go. So that is the header responsive breakpoint. The grid responsive breakpoint is for the blog and portfolio. It's sort of like this site content responsive breakpoint where we were showing you that at 800 pixels, the actual content blocks of the page start restacking. So that's going to be the same thing, but for the blog and portfolio. And then we have the header responsive breakpoint, which I was just showing you which determines when it switches from this navigation to these three bars here. 
and then we went through this content and then sidebar we talked about that and then mobile device zoom so you if you want people to be able to zoom in so like let's say you have this picture right here and people want to be able to see it closer if somebody pinches and and opens their fingers they can zoom in on that picture so we want that to be on you can turn it off if people are complaining that it's causing issues for whatever reason, or you're experimenting on your site and it's causing issues. You can always turn that off. Um, and then we have the element responsive breakpoints as well. So these are actually really cool. Um, if we go, I'm trying to think of the easiest way to show this. So look at this full size page so that you can actually see what I'm talking about here. Okay, so it's talking about small screen, medium screen, large screen, responsive element breakpoints. So with Avada, <clears throat> this just happened within the last couple of years, they added this feature where you can choose, and I'm not sure we have anything set up on this site specifically, uh, but you can choose on what size screen you want different elements to show up on. Okay, so let's say... This title looks great on a desktop, but on mobile devices, it's huge. It takes up like half the screen. So we want a smaller version of this on mobile devices. So what we could do is we could duplicate this headline, edit it, and then if you come down here to element visibility, you can choose what size screens you want it to appear on. So we could say we just want this one to show up on large screens, and we just want this one to show up on small screens and medium screens, right? By doing that, we can choose at what point uh, a, a pixel width each element disappears and shows up. So those small, medium, and large responsive breakpoints are going to be these options right here, small, medium, and large screens. So right now at 640 is when small screens, that's the limit, right? So if somebody's screen is larger than 640, then it won't trigger that response, that small screen um, element. So that just gives you the flexibility to determine when that small, medium, and large screen size uh, switchover takes place, essentially. And then you also have the responsive typography. So I was just talking about this earlier, where you know this title might look good on a computer, but then on a mobile device like a phone you know, or this title might be taking up like a huge portion of the screen and it's way too big and some of the text could be going off the screen. It could be causing all sorts of issues. So you can play around with this responsive sensitivity, which basically means the larger the screen is, the larger the text is going to be. So if you take really large screen with big text and you shrink it down onto a smaller screen, then that text is going to reduce in size a bit so that it fits better on that mobile screen. And so this is the sensitivity and the factor. So it's like how sensitive is it and then how, how much of a responsive change is it. So you kind of have to play around with the two of them. You can, you can just manipulate them back and forth and test it back and forth and see how it looks. And then just make sure you save your changes once you're done with all your testing so that you don't lose any of the work that you put into optimizing the responsiveness of your website. So I hope this video was helpful. If there's anything you have questions about, don't hesitate to reach out. You can simply drop your questions in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to get back to them there. If you are interested in having a professional help you out with your marketing, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. You can always visit my website. I'll leave the link in the description down below. And until next time, take care.